Hello friends, my name is Mohamed Imran. I am a third year MBA student. So in this video, we are going to discuss about quinolones and fluoroquinolones. Starting with quinolones. So there is only one drug that we have to focus on quinolones that is nalidixic acid. It is basically an urinary antiseptic. It is effective against enterobacteri family. It includes E. coli, Proteus, Klebsiella, Enterobacter, Salmonella and Shigella. Nalidixic acid is not effective against Pseudomonas. The mechanism of action of nalidixic acid is DNA gyrase enzyme inhibitor. We have to remember DNA gyrase enzyme inhibitor. It basically inhibits the replication of bacterial DNA. The uses of nalidixic acid is, uh, is it is used in uncomplicated UTI, urinary tract infection and diarrhea caused by Salmonella and Shigella. Now coming to the main part that is fluoroquinolones. Fluoroquinolones are basically fluorinated quinolones. So it comes under a class of antibiotics known as drugs affecting nucleic acid because the mechanism of action of fluoroquinolones is it inhibits DNA gyrase enzyme. There are two enzymes uh, in this topoisomerase 2 in gram negative bacteria and it inhibits topoisomerase 4 in gram positive bacteria. So basically it inhibits the DNA synthesis. So it is bactericidal. Fluoroquinolones are bactericidal. The drugs which are included uh, in this class of antibiotics, there is first generation and second generation. In first generation, we have norfloxacin, ciprofloxacin, p -floxacin, and ofloxacin. In second generation, we have levofloxacin, gemifloxacin and moxifloxacin. Example of drugs in this class, uh, now coming to the pharmacokinetics of fluoroquinolones, uh, the oral bioavailability. Let's discuss about the oral bioavailability. It is maximum in levofloxacin and minimum in norfloxacin. The second parameter is half-life. It is maximum in sparfloxacin and minimum in ciprofloxacin. We have to remember this by heart. Uh, now coming to the excretion part, moxifloxacin and trovafloxacin. Uh, excretion by hepatic metabolism and uh, sparfloxacin and p -floxacin, excretion by renal and hepatic root both renal and hepatic root all other drugs excretion through tubular secretion in the kidney so the oral biology maximum is levofloxacin half-life maximum half-life is of sparfloxacin and sparfloxacin and p -floxacin, excretion by both renal and hepatic root now coming to the dose adjustment in renal disease in all other fluoroquinolones, uh, we have to adjust the dose in renal disease except in PMT that is P floxacin, moxifloxacin and trovafloxacin because of hepatic uh, excretion. Now coming to the respiratory fluoroquinolones, we can remember this by let me get gums. So First one is levofloxacin, me for moxifloxacin, get for gemifloxacin and gums for getifloxacin. These respiratory fluoroquinolones are active against gram positive and atypical organism like chlamydia, legionella and mycoplasma. Now coming to the clinical uses, uh, we would remember clinical uses by taking an example of ciprofloxacin. Uh, it is used as traveler's diarrhea, typhoid carriers meningococcal meningitis prophylaxis and in anthrax treatment and prophylaxis ciprofloxacin is used for um, traveler's diarrhea typhoid carrier meningococcal meningitis prophylaxis and anthrax treatment as well as prophylaxis it is drug of choice and uh, fluoroquinolones are also used in urinary tract infection bacterial diarrhea caused by shigella salmonella sexually transmitted diseases and uh, in mycobacterial infection fluoroquinolones are used as second line drugs and uh, in respiratory infections we have respiratory quinolones fluoroquinolones and uh, ciprofloxacin and levofloxacin are effective against pseudomonas the most important point that in fluoroquinolone class of antibiotics ciprofloxacin and levofloxacins are effective against pseudomonas now coming to the side effects of fluoroquinolones Fluoroquinolones, the most important point here is it is contraindicated in pregnancy. We cannot give fluoroquinolones in pregnancy and we have GI side effects, nausea, vomiting, abdominal discomfort and 
we can also see cartilage growth defect so we should avoid fluoroquinolones in young children it also causes tendinitis and tendon rupture in athletes and prolonged quit QT interval in moxie and sparfloxacin it prolongs Q QT interval in moxifloxacin and sparfloxacin it also causes phototoxicity sparfloxacin and lomifloxacin are responsible for phototoxicity and trovafloxacin is hepatotoxic there are only two drug interactions that we have to remember in fluoroquinolones the first one is ciprofloxacin it increases the plasma concentration of theophylin so it causes toxicity ciprofloxacin increases the plasma concentration of theophylin theophylins are used as anti asthmatics and fluoroquinolones when added with ansets it causes it increases the cns toxicity so we should avoid fluoroquinolones in epilepsy so it is contraindicated in epilepsy fluoroquinolones when taken with ansets it increases the cns toxicity so it is contraindicated in epilepsy thank you for watching hope you like this video make sure you hit the like and subscribe button for more videos related to medical field